about a week ago, I got a text from mom asking me if I'd heard about what happened to my dad. And I hadn't, so I gave her a call. She began to inform me that dad was in the emergency room. You see, earlier in the day, um, dad had been smelling this foul, foul odor, but he couldn't figure out what it was coming from or where it was coming from. So mom came over and they eventually found out that it was dad's foot. Mom took off his sock and she saw this black spot at the end of his foot. And the black spot was giving out this nasty discharge. So immediately they went to the, to the emergency room and they ran a bunch of tests, doctors ran all these tests, and they come in to tell my dad that he has gangrene, um, that he had cellulitis, and that they were gonna turn it over to a surgeon to, to see if where the infection was, if it was in the bone, if it would require surgery. The surgeon came and told them that the infection was in the bone and they were gonna have to do surgery and cut off part of his foot to try to keep the infection from spreading throughout the bones of his body. So I gave dad a call, and at that time, I only knew about the black spot and the discharge and the odor. We began quoting the Word of God, uh, reading scripture, and praying together. One of the scriptures that was just very integral in that time we spent together, very powerful, Mark chapter 16. You know, in verses 17 and 18, it talks about the attesting signs that will accompany those who believe. Jesus said, in my name. They would do these list of things. And one of those things is they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is the last thing Jesus told the disciples. You know, usually your last words you tell people are pretty important. Directly after this, it says, After he had spoken, he was taken up into heaven and he sat down at the right hand of the Father. In Mark 16, verse 20, They went out and preached everywhere while the Lord kept working with them and confirming the message by the attesting signs and miracles that closely accompanied it. Amen. These attesting signs, which attesting signs? The ones that Jesus spoke of earlier, the signs that follow those who believe. They were there, and they confirmed the word of God that was preached. The Lord worked with them. They kept preaching the word of God, and he confirmed that word. So, knowing this scripture, I began speaking the word over Dad, speaking the word, just just going and quoting scripture after scripture after scripture. First John 3 eight. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. First Peter 2.24 that told us that by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. Psalm 103 that said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not one of all his benefits, who forgives all my iniquities and heals all of my diseases. Isaiah 55.11 that the Lord's word, when he sends it out, it will not return to him void, but it will prosper and accomplish everything he sent it out to do. We went over James 5 and the prayer of faith that saves the sick. John 10.10 10, talking of the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. Over and over and over we quoted these scriptures. And you know, after a while, the peace of God just came over both of us. It, so much so that neither of us even spoke. We just sat in the presence of God. And we knew the Lord was working. So we talked for about 30 minutes. And we get off the phone. And the next day I get a text from mom. So I call her. And she tells me the doctor came in. They had run an angiogram and an MRI. And the surgeon comes in and says, Well, uh, there's no infection in your bone. There was no infection anymore. Cellulitis is gone. And a culture they had taken earlier said that uh, he had MRSA. But the MRSA was gone too. The Lord completely healed that. They said, well, surgery's canceled and you can go home. Friends, that's powerful. But the thing is, it was nothing to do with me. It wasn't me healing dad. I'm down in Florida. Dad's in Kentucky. It wasn't dad healing himself. It wasn't the doctors. They didn't even give dad antibiotics. They didn't give him anything. They hadn't given him any medicine. It was the word of God. The word that was confirmed by God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Among us. Jesus Christ was the word made flesh. And he came, like I said in 1 John 3, to destroy the works of the devil. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. 
and that the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. It says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friends, I'm here to tell you that today is the day of salvation. It doesn't matter what you've done, because the Bible says while we were yet sinners, Jesus came to die for us. Maybe some of the things I said sound completely foreign to you. Maybe they sound familiar. Maybe you've gone to church all your life and you think, well, I've been in church my whole life and I haven't heard these truths. I, I'm telling you, there's so much more. There's so much more that God has for you. And he wants you to operate in this. He's not the one that we're waiting for. In actuality, he's waiting for us. So friends, today I'm here to tell you, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead, you're going to be saved. And you can do the same things that Jesus did. Jesus said in John 14, 12, that anyone who believes in him would do the same works that he did and even greater. It's decision time. Uh, it's time to pray. And if you want to receive the Lord, if you want to be sure of your salvation, sure that you're going to heaven and that you're going to be with Jesus for all eternity. Just pray this prayer with me with your heart and with your lips out loud. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me. Cleanse me. Set me free. Jesus, I believe you died for me. You rose again and you're coming back for me. Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost, a hunger for the things of God, and a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm saved. I'm forgiven. I'm born again. And I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Amen. If you pray with me today, I just want to congratulate you on joining the family, becoming a brother or a sister in Christ. And if you did pray with me, please let me know whether it's through a private message or on the comment section of this post. I want to know. Please let me know if you prayed. I love you guys so much. And thank you for taking the time to listen to this testimony of what the Lord has done. No matter what problem you guys have in your life, the solution's in here. So if you need prayer for healing or anything, I'll be glad to pray with you. But just remember the solution is in here in the Word of God. I love you guys, and have a blessed evening.